morning friends i welcome you all in this episode uh, today is a very special episode since so many days i was having a thought in my mind that we will have a discussion or interview with uh, the students uh, like masters phd's or post doctoral students who are pursuing their education from abroad uh, institutes so uh, our subscriber will get benefited in terms of preparation for the examinations required examination for the foreign studies available fellowships for the uh, foreign studies or uh, you can say uh, the financial matters uh, and today special episode this uh, special episode we have with uh, uh, mr koshik uh, before starting uh, the inter- interview or discussion uh, let me introduce uh, him like he he is pursuing here uh, uh, here uh, his phd here in usa from department of geology uh, and uh, university is university of texas at el paso united states of america so uh, his uh, prior education was uh, from iser kolkata he did his uh, integrated uh, bsms uh, from iser kolkata uh, so uh, i welcome uh, mr koshik thank you thank you for having me here and yeah. i'm excited to answer your questions yeah so uh, without any delay we will start uh, with the the questions which is uh, uh, necessary for uh, helpful for our subscriber so mr koshik i will start with uh, the first question what was your thought uh, about in your mind uh, after 10th to choose this particular stream in terms like uh, science in cancer yeah so uh, there are multiple regions so the main basic region is like so if you are in india and you score like good score in a 10th board then there is an inherent pressure to take science and uh, make a career uh, on that path and also uh, the next thing is like i saw a lot of opportunities in this field and then i had a lot of interest uh, doing science and mathematics during 9th and 10th grade so that's why i decided to continue in this field yeah that that's that's very uh, uh, nice answer so uh, the sec- second question which comes to my mind is Uh, for the preparation uh, of the graduation uh, do we need to have a, a specific strategies uh, like uh, the entrance examination selection of stream college or university what what are the strategies you have applied for this particular study yeah so uh, after my 10th standard so i was kind of determined to go to a better college and uh, so like iits nits or ijs so these kind of colleges and you cannot simply enter uh, into these places uh, just like uh, by applying and then getting there so we need to have a rigorous preparation for 2 years and so for that i took a coaching uh, from a private institute and also i was attending the schools and so uh, somehow i managed both the things and i got into iser after giving the je entrance okay uh, that, that that's a very nice uh, what do you said about the preparation or taking the coaching is it uh, compulsory because what i what i have what i have seen some of the students are really uh, uh, they are, they are not uh, able to take a coaching because uh, sometimes it may be costly mm-hmm. so uh, what do you what do you think about dependency on coaching is it necessary or not uh, so that that would be quite subjective but if you uh, were looking for a kind of uh, Uh, good performance in the test like so it's not like simply you have to qualify the entrance yeah. you need to scale, uh, score good ranks yeah. into to get into good university so that's how coaching helps because they have all this uh, experienced faculty so they uh, kind of helps you to complete the syllabus in yeah. less time and then you can revise those concepts okay. so in that respect so that is good coaching mm-hmm. but it's I, i don't think that would be kind of compulsory to attend the coaching because these day you have lot of this distance program yeah, yeah. you can buy those uh, computers or the tabs they give you and then pre-recorded lectures you can watch those and practice the problems so even if you don't make it to like top 1000 or top 2000 in the ranking list but still if you might have some rank to get into good places so so that uh, should not matter much okay so one more uh, simple question i have what kind of examinations are available to get uh, uh, admission in, into the the institute such as ais or iits do you have any idea you can help yeah. us to uh, list out those yeah so uh, if you are uh, planning for like engineering stream then we should target iits and iits or triple iits so these are really good colleges mm-hmm. and besides that there are good private colleges also 
Pete's Pilani, uh, VIP, mm. those are uh, some some of the places right. that you can look into. Mm. And also like DTU, some government colleges also, which are yeah. pretty good. Okay. So those are the list. And then for uh, science research, I will say like ISC Bangalore is should be targeting and, uh, and uh, ISIS. And then there are a few places in IITs, they uh, give you like this uh, opportunity to pursue uh, the yes. science subject. So that's what you should also target and also there are a few other institutes you should find out like IAST, Indian Institute of Petroleum Technology, something like that. Yeah. So those are the things and for medical college, I think uh, you can look into the list like EMS and your state government medical college. So those are the places that you can get into. Yeah, that's that's a nice. Uh, uh, we will have a, uh, the list of institutes in the description box so can the, you can go there. Uh, from private websites, you can go there and you can check out the available institutes. And one more tip that I would like to give you, like, you can get into the website of NIRF, that is National Institute Ranking Framework. So that's a government entity that ranks different universities based on uh, different parameters. So there is a ranking list, you can go get, uh, you can have a look at it through the internet and then you can find out like what's the entrance procedure and what are the things that we need to get into these universities so yeah. that's how you should shortlist those yeah, definitely so i mean the, the website you mentioned is really going to be helpful for our subscriber uh, another question is that as you did your um, integrated courses i have a simple layman question uh, what will be the importance of uh, the uh, integrated courses uh, over the conventional graduation or uh, masters you can say in terms of fee structure a uh, course value what, what will be the impact yeah, so for me, so I didn't have a choice to get into traditional three years plus two years program. Mm -hmm. So since it was an integrated program and mm -hmm. I wanted to get into a good college. So that's why I went ahead to pursue this program. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are certain benefits like you don't have to appear for an entrance after three years mm -hmm. to directly jump into your MSc programs mm -hmm. and then complete it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but uh, so the main demerits that happens is that you cannot exit in between your programs. Okay. So that's a kind of demerit. It's like at some point you realize you don't want to do these kind of things. Then you cannot simply switch and then go somewhere else. Oh, we need to be very careful. Yeah, right? very so careful. careful. Yeah. So uh, uh, um, it will be uh, like um, uh, well, it will be different question from your stream. But uh, I'll ask you whether uh, like uh, master courses, like simple um, uh, MSc courses. Uh, what? How to choose the the bra branch or you can say stream? And what are the uh, entrance uh, exams are there, planning for the, after PG, planning for the PhD, do we have to apply all the strategies before choosing master course? Uh, so after you complete your three years bachelor program, then you have, you can appear for IIT exam or get exams to get into good colleges. And mm -hmm. so after uh, you are inside the MSc program, so always try to get into good programs because mm -hmm. They have the reputation of uh, placing students yeah. in good, better universities or better PhD programs. Mm -hmm. So you should be always targeting on that front. But I think so once you get into this program, then you will get to know what to do after those. Yeah. And so if you are an MSc student, then if you want to do PhD in India, you should definitely apply for CSIR Net Fellowship. So that that's how you get funded and mm -hmm. you might get accepted into one of these universities or national lab. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you want to apply for like foreign university, then you have to prepare a lot for that. Yeah. So it's not like that uh, after your graduation, you decide, okay, I want to go to uh, this. Abroad. Abroad. Okay, I'm coming to this question yeah. only. Uh, what are the qualifications required to uh, apply for the PhD abroad? Like uh, yeah. as you are doing your PhD in USA, yeah. uh, I mean, you might help us to sort of the, the yeah. criteria. Yeah, so uh, different countries have like different rules uh, related to the PhD program. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the main essential component of your application is like, do you have that research aptitude? Yeah, okay. If that, uh, that is not there, then it's very difficult to get those things. Mm -hmm. And in order to prove that you have certain potential, mm -hmm. you have to work for like uh, two, three years or something like that on a project or mm -hmm. on a certain field. Okay. So, and for uh, to be precise about the US programs, uh, you need like three letter of recommendations and good grades mm -hmm. and good courses that you should have taken during your bachelor's and master's. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I talk about good grades, uh, mm -hmm. recommendations, and then 
uh, I think you need to pay some fees mm -hmm. and then for English proficiency you might have to appear for TOEFL mm -hmm. test of English as a foreign language mm -hmm. and also some places require GRE entrance so mm -hmm. you might want to give that one as well yeah. and also you need to like write a statement of purpose like why do you want to pursue PhD program and okay. how will you be get benefited if you join those mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and what kind of experiences you have and mm -hmm. also your resume so the, the, the application is pretty kind of uh, challenging in the sense that it takes a lot of time to then send one application. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's 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 really helpful. But prior to that, I'll uh, ask uh, one question: Do our uh, uh, post pre post uh, masters uh, uh, what we can say experience uh, in terms of the summer internship or the fellowship uh, will uh, really help us to overcome the challenges uh, in? Um, I mean, choosing the PhD institutes abroad. Yeah. So as I said, like, so there are different components in an application, and so I think uh, the most uh, important parameters are like your letter of recommendation and mm -hmm. what you write in the statement of purpose. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you are going for this kind of internship or research experience, mm -hmm. already you are you have something to write on this statement of purpose, yeah, yeah. and there are people who who has something to write about you. Okay they can recommend you okay. and also you have something to write on your resume yeah. so you are kind of tackling all these three things yeah. at one go if you are going for internship or doing research under a professor in your university that's really interesting and uh, helpful for uh, building the, the uh, background for going for the phds and uh, uh, studies from the abroad so uh, as as uh, you are doing your phd i'll ask one question what are the uh, phd from abroad i'm sorry so what are the benefits of doing PhD from abroad institutes? Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, it's mostly depend on the fields that you are working on. Mm -hmm. So you should be always targeting like uh, the professors who are working in that particular university, how good are those people mm -hmm. uh, in a specific area of interest that you want to do PhD. So if you find those kind of people in India, then it's better to do there. Mm -hmm. And if you find that someone here in US or Europe mm -hmm. is working on something that you are interested, then you should definitely join uh, this program. But what in general I have seen is that the funding scenarios and then the exposure that you get out of research, uh, besides the research, that is pretty good in this country. So yeah. uh, in that respect, so US is better. That's very interesting yes. to, to but it. but it, it's not always the case. Like it, yeah. I say, like it's yeah. mostly dependent on the field that you are working on. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting and very nice. And what are your future plans uh, after PhD? So that our subscriber will get motivated by uh, analyzing those yeah. things. Yeah. So after PhD, I am uh, planning to do some postdoctoral research uh, in other universities, and mm -hmm. then. After that, I am planning to work as a research scientist for a couple of years and mm -hmm. then apply for academic positions. Yeah, means it means uh, you have a very bright future in terms of the, the future, you can say, the uh, uh, future possibilities. So uh, I'll, I'll come, uh, come back to the last question, of, uh, like you, you said about the, um, the preparation strategies and other things. So one of the basic question is, how do you manage financially on your own? in this expensive country yeah most of the phds that you get are funded and if you're not getting funded for your phd then i think you should not join it mm -hmm. and then uh, for me especially i am funded through both uh, uh, research assistantship and teaching assistantship so that's how i get covered so i think if you join any decent program so mm -hmm. they will uh, fund it for your okay. duration like three four okay years. do you have any uh, uh, idea about what are the programs available so that you can say in one or two lines if you are uh, uh, so uh, for specifically us you apply to different universities and mm -hmm. universities have different departments mm -hmm. and then each department have their phd program and you apply to those mm -hmm. and for europeans i think there are different labs mm -hmm. so you can apply to there and for funding, I think you need to apply the government fundings like for Germany, the, like DART fellowship. Mm -hmm. And for UK, you have this uh, uh, Gates Cambridge fellowship or Marie Curie fellowship. Mm -hmm. Those kind of are there. And for US, I think, uh, I don't think there is any kind of fellowship program. Mm -hmm. as, uh, but I, after coming here, you can apply for like 
resident fellows will yeah. have to do that. That's, that's, that's good. I mean, we have a lot of um, uh, ways to get yeah. around and something, uh, I mean, uh, manage our finance yeah. expenses. So last and uh, not uh, the least question, like uh, any take home message for our subscribers so that uh, they are very, I mean, um, enthusiastic and they have so many future plans. So uh, on behalf of them, I'm asking this question, yeah. well, you can you can have any take home, take home message for them specifically? Yeah, so I would say like, uh, be clear on your goals and what you want to do in your next five to 10 years, because uh, if you want to achieve something, it uh, doesn't happen overnight. So you have to prepare for a continuous 5-10 years to get something. Mm -hmm. So I think you should be prepared well ahead and then go with life. So mm -hmm. that's how you'll achieve things. Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, th that's very nice. Uh, but we have to be focused. What we are planning, we have we should have a, a roadmap for the next 5-6 five, 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 yeah. years, you can say. And uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Koshik. Uh, it's, it's really going to be helpful for our, all of our subscribers who are already there. And we are going to join us. Uh, Thank you very much for having me here. Yeah, and I really enjoyed yeah, this discussion. Yeah, that's that's very nice, and even I'm feeling like uh, very 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 motivated. You can mm -hmm. say, Do, uh, although I'm doing my postdoctoral studies mm -hmm. here in USA, uh, I I like those uh, uh, those kind of plannings and who can uh, which will be useful for our uh, future. So uh, once again, I will thank you, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Koshik. And uh, I, I th thank all of you for watching this video. If you like this video, please uh, uh, do share with your friends, families who are in need in this kind of motivation, you can say, or you can say the, the background information related to the postdoctoral or masters or PhD studies from the foreign universities. And some of the links such as available fellowships uh, and the institutes and the NIRF, NIRF if I am not these ranking websites are in the description box. You can go there. You can check out all the details related to this particular uh, episode. Along with that, we have so many videos for the industrial job, government job, summer internship uh, at national or international level. You can check out them. I hope you guys will like this video. If you like, please do share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Yeah. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Yeah.